Hey, my name is Sonia Deville and you're watching Killjoy Roger. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know that this video will not have a script. So if I do trip or stumble over my words, because it is a discussion video that I want to come straight from the heart, I'm sorry about that. That's going to happen at some point in the video, just giving you guys a heads up. I'm also sick. I'm sorry if you guys can tell. Uh, my voice is probably a little nasally. Um, I believe I could possibly potentially have the flu. I, I've, I get it pretty often. I hate to say that. I do. So I kind of know what it feels like and it does feel similar to that. So sorry if you guys can tell. You know, I'm trying my best to avoid that. And that's why I've been kind of slacking on videos lately, especially in the past about two weeks. I've just been progressively getting worse and worse. And who knows? But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the video here and talk about how we could save for honor. I want to start off by go ahead and saying that a lot of people are saying we shouldn't be adding new characters we need to be you know buffing nerfing fixing characters and things of that nature to that I'm going to say I disagree now a lot of the characters in my opinion are very imbalanced for example Shigoki worst character on the roster basically no matter what game mode you play if it's not 4v4s he's a he's just a terrible character overall and he's a uh, really 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 bad right now sadly He's my boy. I love him to death. I'll never stop playing him. Even if his rework is terrible, I'm not going to stop playing him because he's so fun for me sometimes. But with that being said, you have so many imbalance issues. Like, for example, you know, Berserker and Conqueror are still the best two heroes in the game. And all of the Wu Lin are broken in a much different manner on console. I, you can go to anyone's comment section and, and you'll see them complaining about the Wu Lin light spam meta right now. And, of course, the people who are saying that there isn't a light spam meta, 9 times out of 10 are the people who can successfully manage to parry lights. And, you know, I get that. But not everyone's going to be on their A game each and every day and be able to deal with 400 millisecond instant attacks. Especially if the people they're fighting have 200 ping and can insta-guard break you. Things like that, just, you know, I, I can't deal with it. A lot of people can't. And that's why a lot of people will hear me bitching about the Wulin quite a bit. Their kits are really neat and niche but you don't see people use those kits. You, people, you see people just press R1, especially in high-level play. I'm not really sure why, but oh well, uh, regardless of that. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the biggest part of uh, the community and where I feel like things are going, sadly. And that's it. We're getting less and less content, especially this year. Last season, last year, sorry, we got quite a bit of content. Two characters every season, and every so often we'd get a rework or an off season. Like, for example, I, I was talking to someone earlier about the Valkyrie and Warden rework season. That's all we got was a Valkyrie and Warden rework. And that season was probably the most dead I've ever seen for Honor. Everyone was like, oh, this is the death of the game, and then Marching Fire was right there too, so... Everyone kind of stayed around for Marching Fire. But this year, all we have is four heroes. The $30 for four heroes, okay? Let's keep this in mind that obviously there's going to be the occasional rework. I would, pro I would probably say there's going to be a rework each season. I know Shigoki's rework is right here on the corner. No one knows what his is going to be yet because they haven't released any information on it at the time of this video. But it's kind of scary to see where everything is going because less content this year means that, you know, less content this year. You know, if the least, the lower amount of characters that they put in this game, the less optimal it is for me to make videos and things of that nature on this game. And I love this game to death, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, my friend Chubbs said to me the other day that it's not the game that's bad, it's the players. And I'm kind of supporting that idea now. A lot of the time that I deal with this game and, you know, actually end up getting upset at it isn't because of the game itself or the game's mechanics, other than, you know, like Shigoki T-Rex arms or anything like that. It's because of the player base and how abusive they can be in certain mechanics and things of that nature that weren't meant to be abused in a such manner that they're doing. 
And I mean, I guess that's okay, you know, people are gonna do that. It's in every fighting game that people do that. But I feel like this community is probably the worst about it. For example, like I was talking about a moment ago, light spam. On console, it's extremely difficult to deal with if you don't have really good reflexes. And that's why you see me play a lot of characters that, uh, you know, run hyper armor. Because I can deal with light attacks on prediction, but when it comes to reaction, I, I, uh, I do have some issues. But, <laughs> enough of that, I guess. Year 3 is Year of the Harbinger. This is where things are going to be super damn difficult for the developers to keep this game alive. As I said, four heroes, we're going to have the occasional reworks. This is where they need to start including new content, period. This is, this is the strong point where they're going to determine if their game lives or dies this year. My prediction, I hate to say it, is that this game dies. I imagine right after the fourth hero releases, they're going to announce that uh, you know they will no longer be supporting the game. That's my prediction. Now, I don't think this game is going to end up living like Rambo Six Siege did, for the simple fact that this game is uh, very niche, and it's uh, very unorthodox in pretty much every way that it possibly could be. And I I'm not really sure how to really word this properly. I guess that's one of the reasons I didn't want to write a script, is because, you know, I kind of wanted to speak from the heart, like I said. And I guess the biggest thing I want to get across is that this community uh, has has really tried to keep this game alive. I will definitely give it to everybody. The content creator side of things especially, we've all tried so damn hard, but they don't really they don't really help us a whole lot, you know? As I said, this is where they need to be strong arming and pushing out more content, and this is where they're kind of slacking. Less characters, hopefully we they announce more game modes. The best way they could possibly keep this game alive is by doing two things. One Introducing new game modes alongside the new characters each season. And then, as well as that, flying out for honor based, dedicated YouTubers to the Warriors Den live streams. Now, I messaged, I, I uh, added them on Twitter the other day and mentioned that idea. And they said, oh, yeah, we fly streamers out pretty often to assist on the Warriors Den. And I was like, why don't you fly out? People who are solely based around your channel, like CJ, Spliced, myself, Rockdog, anybody, and uh, Kenzo, even, and I just, I didn't get a reply. And obviously, it's pretty obvious why I didn't get a reply, because they want people like I Am Wildcat and Cartoons to be uh, doing all their shit for them. I understand the, uh, the appeal of having someone with millions of viewers millions of subs each video coming out and you know assisting you with your game I get that but one of the biggest steps I could possibly ever make is flying the dedicated for honor youtubers to the Warriors Den and assisting them could you imagine what would happen to someone's channel if I don't know they flew me out they flew CJ out they flew rock dog anybody really you know, that would show that they care about this community so much that they don't want this game to die. That they're not only here for money, but they're here for the community. And it seems like, especially a lot as of recently, that they may only be here for the money. Now, let's just, you know, put numbers together. The original Super Ultra Omega Gold Edition Deluxe, you know, thing was $100 for this game. $99.99. I bought that, of course. I played the beta. I loved the game. I was going to just play the hell out of this game. I wanted to base my YouTube channel on it whenever the game first came out. Then they came out with the, you know, the Marching Fire expansion. And I was like, you know what? It's a new year. I can see where they might need some income. Okay. One of my subs donated me the money, and I was like, alright, I'll get it. Why not? You know, it's fine. So, I got it. Marching Fire, $30. And now, they have a new year with a new $30 expansion. That mean, that's $160 for one game with every, all the DLC with it. Just put that in perspective for a moment. $130, that's a lot of money. Or $160, sorry. That's a lot of money. $160 for a game with all of its DLC... I think that's the highest price game on PSN, period. 
I don't, I don't think there's another game out there that can top that. Maybe Rainbow Six Siege, but still, same Ubisoft team. Am I right? I understand that the company needs to make money, though, so I'm not going to complain a whole lot about cash-wise. But still, as I said, 160 bucks that's a lot of money to really have uh, been put into. Especially in a game of, you know, this era. And when you only fly people out, like, you know, these bigger streamers, Cypher PK, Cartoons, I Am Wildcat, when you're only sponsoring their videos, just turn around and take a look. What does it look like to you guys? I know what it looks like to me. It looks like these guys are just being flown out there so Ubisoft can use them. Looks like Ubisoft is using us. Yeah, I understand they want to keep their game alive, but they're going about this the wrong way. Show some compassion for your community. If you don't show support for your community and listen to the higher level players, you know, the higher tier players, the people who play this game consistently, then what are you going to do in the long run, you know? Maybe that's the reason the game has uh, had a lot of issues. Maybe it's not just, you know, maybe it's not just this community acting the way they do. Maybe part of the reason is because the devs actually haven't shown us any fucking respect. And I love this game as much as the next person does in this community, you know? The community is okay, sometimes. Rarely. But sometimes, it is. And the community does definitely, uh turn a lot of people off that is for sure 110 percent this community is absolute fucking dookie a lot of the time but another thing they could do if they decide to never do that which is highly possible is introduce new game modes okay i don't know who the man was or woman that designed tribute but i hope they got fired I'm kidding, I don't actually hope they got fired. I hope they have a very successful career. But, Tribute was very terribly designed, in my opinion. Three flags capture the flag game mode? No, that... No. Uh, that's a terrible idea. Now, Breach was very well thought out. Breach was very well done. Breach is what Dominion originally should have been. And I really enjoyed that uh, quite a bit. Now, with that being said... <laughs> Um, everyone has been asking for two things. A 3v3 game mode with no gear stats, and a free-for-all game mode. Now, we already have 1v1, 2v2s, and 4v4s, and almost all game modes, are, or all characters are balanced around 4v4s, because that's where they say the competitive meta lies, for some reason. they, they uh, The devs don't believe that duels should be where their characters are balanced at, which, I mean... I guess I could kind of get that. You know, I kind of get behind that a little bit. You don't want people to be uh, ego boosting all the time with their their S tier duelists. You know, you kind of want people to go into fours more. Uh, you know, that's cool or whatever. Three v threes though, that would be lit. I'm not sure what they could do for a three v three game mode, but a free for all game mode, it wouldn't take much. I don't think programming wise. I know they said they have a, most of their shit programmed around two teams. But, I don't think that uh, programming in two more teams for a free-for-all game mode would be too difficult. Now, I don't know much about programming. That's just, like, me speaking out of my ass. You know, I'm not sure. But, a free-for-all game mode has been something everyone's been clamoring for since the beginning. So, those are my ideas on how we could keep this game alive. Fly out your content creators for this game. Create a couple more game modes during the year. And listen to the community a little bit more. Even if it's on Reddit. Have a good day, guys. I love you all. Peace. Hope you enjoyed.